I just think the mentality of you taking on anything is a, is a huge asset to just facing batters and facing life. I've always said it's a journey I would have never asked to go on, but it is one I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. It was a normal pregnancy. Every doctor's appointment was great. Every heartbeat was great. Even when he was born, he looked totally fine. They had absolutely no concerns whatsoever. He was eating and growing and everything was just great. And it was at the five day point, I just remember the nurse walking into our, our hospital room and she just said something's not right. She said we can't get a pulse in his groin, his arms and his hands and feet are just cold and they're blue. And you were like, wait a minute. I mean, it was just a shock. I get nauseous just thinking about it. I mean, it was, um, that was a pretty rough time. It was really hard and you, especially when it's your first child and you don't even know what to expect about with parenthood, let alone trying to parent a child who is now dealing with a very serious health condition. Well, he had several um, heart defects. The ultimate driver to transplant was his left ventricle that never fully developed in utero. We didn't know that initially. We found that out at about the three month point. It was a Sunday morning and the phone rang and Heidi, who was a transplant nurse on call that day, she's the one that called us and said, that they had a potential heart for Thomas. I mouthed to him that this was the call, and I just remember him leaping. Like, he literally leaped over Thomas, who was laying on a blanket on the floor. The blanket goes, the edge of the blanket goes flying over his face, and I could just tell he was just in that mode of, oh my gosh. It was a lot of mixed emotions, too, because you're so excited that this could possibly happen for your child. and. At the same time, you know that somebody just lost their child. I never really prayed for someone to die, but I prayed if they had to die, it'd be a match. Right. And that was, that was hard. The one thing I will never ever forget is we walked out of the ICU, it was me and Jim and Heidi, our nurse, and Thomas was in his bed. And I'm crying, he's crying, Heidi's crying, we're all crying in the hall, and we're at the operating room doors, and Thomas just looked at me and smiled, as if to say, you know what, Mom, it's gonna be okay. And I thought, well, if that may be the last face, the last expression I ever see on his face, but it meant so much, like he knew he was gonna be all right. Every update they gave us was just really positive. He was doing well, and his seven to eight hour surgery ended up taking about four hours and 15 minutes. His two days on the bypass machine, they weaned him off in a little over an hour and his heart fit like a glove. I remember seeing Thomas for the first time and his whole body was arched off the bed, except his, they had to strap down his hands and his feet because he felt good. His heart was working, he was happy, and his entire body was arched off the bed. And his doctor said, hey, this is great to see, but he really needs to calm down because he's just been through major surgery. He was only six months old when he had got his new heart. so. We were still little neurotic parents, but I think as time goes on and you see them doing well and you, as a parent, you want them to be a kid. So December of 2015, it was fall of his senior year. He had just finished his baseball recruiting. He just made a decision on where he wanted to go to college and play baseball. And I was in town and he called me and he had just finished working out and he said, Mom, you know, I just don't feel right. So I immediately came home and I put my heart rate monitor on him and his resting heart rate was in the 140s. And now keep in mind, Thomas cannot feel a high heart rate because all his nerves are cut to his heart. So when his heart rate spikes up, he can't feel it. He just sees other symptoms. The electrophysiologist told us something that I, I know blew my mind, but when they put his new heart in, it is attached to the back muscle of his old heart because it needs something to attach to. His old heart was trying to beat and what that was causing it to do is when his heart was going through its normal cycle of beating, when his old heart tried to beat, it would just send it into a flutter and that caused a high heart rate. So the electrophysiologist said that they would do what they call an ablation procedure. They would simulate a flutter in him 
and there's a noise that would come out where his old heart was trying to beat. And it's at those sites that they would go in and burn him. And that would, I guess, essentially quiet down his old heart and it wouldn't cause it to send his new heart into a flutter. And I was absolutely flabbergasted. I'm not so sure that now that when they do the procedure for transplantation that they even do it the way they did 19 years yeah. ago as far as how they attach the heart and sew everything on. So they've learned a lot in the last 10 to 20 years. I look at where we were 18 and a half years ago when he got his heart and where we are today and even where we were in 2011 and where we were in 2015, what they learned in that four year time period of how to help these kiddos out, how to prolong their lives, it's huge, it's absolutely huge. So just the, the amount of research that goes on behind the scenes that we don't ever see, we see it in the results in our children and that was huge. There's so much hope out there and our kids can go on to lead happy, healthy lives. I believe it wholeheartedly with Thomas and if he can just be an inspiration to one kid, then everything he's been through, or one family, everything he's been through has been so worth it. He's definitely like my biggest role model, you know? I mean, even just like my brother, I mean, I could have chosen anyone to model after like a, like a famous athlete or, you know, like a war hero or something like that, but he's about this, like the strongest person I know, like mentally, physically, emotionally. He has not allowed his heart to define him or stop him. He amazes me. You know, the best thing I can do is to help other people and give them hope too and kind of be beneficial to them like, like life was to me, I guess.